Hello! In this video, I'm going to walk through a patch that I built in Max MSP, uh, which is designed to detect transients in an audio signal and output two signals. One, which is uh, just a, a one or a zero, depending on whether the transient is occurring, and another, which is kind of just the general loudness of that signal. Uh, and I should say the transient is um, basically just the initial attack phase of a signal. So when you clap or snap or make like a t sound, it's that first really loud, uh, big portion of the audio signal. Uh, and so if you look at this spectroscope here, you can see um, if I'm quiet and then I snap, that would be that big part there would be considered a transient. Um, and so we'll walk through the structure of this patch and then we'll also look at how uh, you might use that transient detector object in a broader kind of creative context. Uh, so starting with this patch, uh, we have the input signal here, which is an inlet. And we also have the sensitivity control, which is just a float. It can go from zero to one. Uh, so starting on the left, <coughs> just thinking through the uh, the the digital signal processing of the input signal. Uh, first we run it through a one pole filter, which is essentially just a low pass filter, um, filtering out the high frequencies since typically transients are um, part of the low end of the spectrum. Um, so this, this 500 is a bit arbitrary, but I think for most purposes, um, if you're trying to capture transients, you can filter out everything above 500 hertz. Um, and then uh, we take the absolute value of this signal. Uh, we, you know, we're interested in how loud something is. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's a negative signal or a positive signal. Um, in max, you know, that would be like, it doesn't matter if it's negative one or one. Um, it's still, that's a high amplitude event. And so we want to compute the absolute value of the signal. Uh, and then we uh, are looking at the average. So, um, the average takes, uh, just by default, the, the most recent 100 samples and computes the average of that. Um, this is just to kind of help smooth out the signal um, so that we can really um, try to only look for times when it is high and kind of stays high for not just like one single click, but m typically when you snap or clap, you know, that, that signal is going to be high for more than a few samples. And so this uh, helps to kind of smooth out any, um, you know, minor deviations from uh, accidentally uh, turning this on. <clears throat> uh, kind of similarly with the, the slide here. Um, so the slide works in a logarithmic way. So um, you can configure how the signal should change when it moves up and when it moves down. So that's what these two arguments are. The first argument, zero, means that when the signal goes up, let it go up as you know fast as it normally would. So basically, let it pass through. Uh, and that's because, again, we're interested in the transients and when they're going up. So we really do want to know, OK, it went up, pass it through. Um, but kind of on the converse of that, when the signal's going down, we don't want to uh, let it go down super quickly, because if it goes down quickly, it might go up right again, you know, a few samples later, and then we've kind of accidentally computed two transients uh, when there's actually only one occurring. So this, again, just helps to only capture the up movement and then kind of slowly go down, uh, since typically you can only have so many transients in a given amount of time. Um, and because of this average, um, that kind of tends to just reduce the overall number that's being computed. So there's some uh, basically just times tilde here to increase the gain of the signal back towards something that's you know generally from zero to one in most audio contexts. Um, again, kind of somewhat arbitrary, just seemed like a good number that worked. And um, yeah, basically at this point we're looking at if the signal that's been computed here is greater than some threshold that we set. So. Uh, the sensitivity control can go from 0 to 1. Uh, when it's 1, we, we flip it here with a scale. So when it's 1, 
the output will be zero. And when it's zero, the output will be one. And this is because we want to compute, for example, say we want uh, a very low sensitivity. If it's low sensitivity, the, uh, you know, we're, we're inputting zero here, which means that we're, uh, uh, the output is one going into here. And this will only be uh, outputting a one when this signal is greater than one, which is, you know, it can happen actually, uh, but it's not that common. Um, whereas, you know, on the converse, uh, if the sensitivity input is one, that'll get scaled to zero. And then anytime this signal is greater than zero, uh, which is quite frequent, that's gonna be what is sent out. Um, so just to kind of see what that looks like uh, before looking at the envelope out. So this is the first outlet of this object. And you can see it's connected down here. Uh, right now, <coughs> I have sensitivity control set to 0 0.2. And I will stop talking and just snap for a little bit. And you can see it. So nothing's actually getting through. But if I do maybe some just taps like that on um, this table that I'm working on, you can see it got through. Um, if I increase the sensitivity, you can see it's actually at one almost the whole time. Um, and if I put it down to zero, there are still some, some getting through. Um, and that's just because of the way that um, the microphone has a fair amount of gain on it. Um, but anyway, uh, suffice it to say that this is uh, something that you would dial in specifically for a given situation with a microphone or with an audio file. Um, so once you know generally like a, a number that works, you just kind of set that and you keep it there and it should work. Uh, I'll just put it back to 0 0.2 for now. Um, so looking at the rest here, um, so we take that average and we then just kind of push it through another slide and this smooths it out quite a bit. So uh, whereas before we were going you know, up immediately with no halt um, or no slide and then um, down kind of slowly, in this context even more so, uh, both up and down are just smoothed quite a bit. Um, so that just helps to smooth the signal out and make it more of uh, something that generally corresponds to how loud the input is. Uh, and again, this times two is just a bit arbitrary, just uh, trying to keep the envelope generally moving between zero and one. And so if you look at, if I uh, move this scope over to be connected to that and um, quiet for a second, you should see this go down to pretty much zero. And then if I start talking loudly or hitting the table, you can see it goes up quite a bit. Um, so that is the envelope that corresponds to, um, yeah, just how loud it is. And all right, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's basically the object. Uh, it out, outputs a binary zero and one, and then an envelope. And so how you might use that in a creative context. Um, let's see, so I uh, made this noise object here and I'm just scaling it from negative one and one, uh, which is the, you know, that's the noise is always from negative one to one by default, uh, to 48 to 72, uh, these are, just a, a range of MIDI notes, kind of like in the middle of the uh, MIDI note scale. Uh, then I'm rounding it so that they're not floating point numbers, but basically integer signals. And then I'm um, running that through M2F, which is taking the MIDI note number, 48 to 72, and converting that into a frequency. Um, so that becomes a frequency number. And that's the input to a sample and hold. A sample and hold uh, will basically hold whatever is coming into the left inlet every time a high signal uh, goes from zero to high in this inlet. Uh, so every time a transient is detected, for example, this is goes from zero to one, we're going to be sampling and holding a new MIDI note. And the, um, yeah, so the, we can look at that kind of in, in real time. Every time I click, new new note, and if I connect that to uh, what you know, you should be able to hear this now. Yeah, so um, you can you know, at the, at, uh, 
um, let's see, basically what's happening is the frequency is going into the cycle object and it's changing the frequency of this sine wave oscillator. And um, we're also, every time a transient is detected, running that through just a, a, a quick and dirty slide to um, use that to create an am amplitude envelope. So essentially every time this goes high to one, in other words, every time a transient is detected, uh, and maybe it'd be better if I uh, use the scope to show what that looks like. Um, just tap for a little bit and you can see how every time that there's a, a transient, uh, it goes high and then it kind of slides back down. Um, that's this slide. And um, that you know, makes it so that uh, we can control the volume of this oscillator and basically make it like ping every time. And I just realized this has probably been playing some notes to you. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> um, and lastly, after the amplitude control here, um, amplitude envelope, whatever you want to call it, uh, last stage is just taking this uh, signal envelope, uh, general loudness uh, control signal, and uh, also uh, modulating the amplitude again. So uh, when the signal is loud, uh, this will, you know, there, there will be less of a gain reduction and it'll essentially pass through at full volume. But the quieter uh, the, the transients were detected and the quieter the, um, the output of the kind of like little pings will be. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, how this transient detector works and um, how you might kind of use it in just kind of a fun little patch. Um, obviously there's a lot more you could do with this and um, yeah one other thing I wanted to note is that um, particularly with onsets, uh, detecting onsets and things that are very, um, you know, you, you maybe you're doing this in real time or something um, at a performance, you would want to make sure that the latency is as low as possible between you know, what, um, what you're doing with your body and what the computer is computing, um, just because when there's latency, it can get tricky and confusing and the timing can get off. Um, and so one important thing to note would be that the I.O. vector size is as low as your computer can handle. Um, the I.O. vector size is to um, essentially, um, it's the number of samples that um, there is a delay between what's happening in the real world and what's happening in Max. Um, and so every 32 samples, you know, that's what goes into Max and gets processed. And then also um, what is sent from Max, I think, has that same 32 uh, sample delay. So um, basically the, the smaller this number is, uh, if your computer can afford it, um, which hopefully, you know, I'm at like one or two percent, so hopefully uh, you could as well. Um, but yeah, just uh, this would be the best uh, scenario for handling latency. Cool. Uh, well, thanks for checking out my patch and um, cheers. Bye.